What are so-called meteor craters? Are they really what we've been taught by the world? Well, the first red flag that something isn't right is this. We see these massive so-called meteor craters all over the world, which have supposedly remained after 50,000 or more years. But there's never any sign of a meteor anywhere. Every time, the meteor itself is just totally gone. Of course, that defies all common sense. Isn't it interesting how they want us to believe the impact crater itself can stay in shape over such extended periods of tens of thousands of years, withstanding the elements? But the meteor itself apparently couldn't leave any trace whatsoever? The rationale is patently absurd on its face. But next, try a quick search for images of asteroids or meteors using whatever search engine you prefer. Notice they're all obviously computer-generated images from an artist, similar to the laughably fake images of the supposed globe Earth they give us. I'm sure some NASA fanboys will believe some of these are genuine photographs, but it's as clear as day that they're all fake, even those which are claimed to be real by governmental space agencies. But here's what really got me thinking about these so-called meteor craters and what they really are. Check out what the Bible says in Genesis 7:11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. It says the fountains of the great deep were broken up. Great deep means the deep ocean, and broken up means to come upward. Anyway, in my research into these so-called meteor craters, I notice there are lots of them. They're scattered uniformly all over the world with craters on each continent. But what really stood out to me is they're all roughly the same size. The general uniformity in their dimensions really stood out because of these craters truly are the result of giant rocks falling from outer space, as we're told. Then I sure wouldn't expect that at all. I'd expect some to be small, some medium-sized, some gigantic. But no, instead, we see similarly sized craters scattered across the entire Earth in a very uniform way. And out of all these craters worldwide, it's always the same. No meteor in sight. The meteor itself is just totally gone every time. Now, what came to mind when I saw these so-called meteor craters is a road trip. I took a few years back to Yellowstone National Park to see the geysers. Here are some images of what the geysers look like when they're erupting. Doesn't the crater underneath look familiar to you? Take a real close look. Now, I'm showing you the ones that are erupting. But now, let's take a look at the geysers when they're still and calm. Notice any similarities? Okay, now, when we compare them side by side, the similarities are unmistakable. Check this out. Notice right in the middle, we can see where the water burst out of the ground. And it's the exact same thing on the so-called meteor crater. Same thing here. On both images, everything around that center point is just pushed outward from the water pressure coming up. And you can tell by the identical shape or contour of the land that it's water pressure, not a meteor. It's as clear as day we're looking at the original geysers which God opened up for the Great Flood. It's common sense. All you have to do is look at it. Anyway, notice how the Earth has an upturned edge toward the outside of these so-called meteor craters. I'll show you how that happens. Take a look at this photo of a geyser fixing to erupt. You can actually see the water upturning the edge of the hole around it, right before the geyser erupts. But what really settles it? is what the Word of God itself tells us. Now, once again, if you look in Genesis 7:11, it says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, 
the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. These scriptures are telling us exactly what these are, and they're telling us exactly how God caused the great flood. It can't be more clear when it says the fountains of the great deep were broken up. Now, it also says the windows of heaven were opened, so we know there's a firmament above us and it has windows. It's saying God caused the great flood by opening the windows of the firmament to bring waters from above, combined with geysers erupting to bring the waters from below. Flooding the entire earth takes a lot of water, so God combined the two. Of course, skeptics will say, but science tells us those are meteor craters. But that's where your discernment should kick in, because there isn't a single meteor to be found in any of them. In all these craters found all over the world, there's no meteor near, around, or in the crater itself. And these craters are identical to geyser craters. That's because these so-called meteor craters are actually from the giant geysers that God opened up for the flood of Noah when the fountains of the great deep were opened up. Based on their size, they would have been massive, erupting with many millions of gallons of water per hour, much larger than any geysers we see today. And as any truther knows, they like lying on the news and in textbooks while showing the truth in movies occasionally. Well, that's exactly what they did with these craters. Check out what they showed us back in 2014 in the movie Noah. So the Bible specifically tells us what these craters are. In Genesis, when it says the fountains of the great deep were broken up, but we're told again in the book of Enoch. When Enoch, the grandfather of Noah, tells Noah that the waters beneath the earth will erupt in the great deluge. But as of right now, the angels are just holding the water back until God commands them to release it. Chapter 66. And after that he showed me the angels of punishment, who are prepared to come in order to open all the powers of the water which is under the earth, that it may be a judgment and destruction over all those who live and dwell on the earth. And the Lord of Spirits commanded the angels who went forth, that they should not lift up their hands, but should wait. For these angels are over the power of the waters. And I went away from the presence of Enoch to open all the powers of the water which is under the earth, to open all the powers of the water which is under the earth, to open all the powers of the water which is under the earth, to open all the powers of the water which is under the earth, to open all the powers of the water which is under the earth. And after that, my grandfather Enoch took hold of me with his hand and raised me up and said to me, Go, for I have asked the Lord of the spirits concerning this shaking of the earth. And he said to me, 
on account of their injustice, their judgment is completed, and will not be counted before me concerning the mouths which they have searched out, and through which they have learned that the earth will be destroyed, and those who live thereon.